Hey, it's the middle of August, so it's time for my mid-month wrap-up. And so far, I've read eight books. And it's been a fantastic beginning of the month. Um, I've read, out of the eight I've read, I've read one, two, three, four, five, six of them were off the book, book, book a long list. So that's a fantastic start. I've now got none on my bookshelf because the library hasn't delivered yet I'm still the rest of them are all reserved and I'm just waiting for them to come what's the betting that I get the rest of them all in one go and I have three weeks to read the whole pile but anyway we'll see anyway so first half of the month six of the book prizes and then I read two Net Gallic arcs so, starting with the first book I read in the month, and that was Night Crawling by Leila Motley. Um, this was a five star for me. I absolutely love the I, the, um, the darkness in this um, 17 year old Kira, who is caught by the police and abused by the police, really. It's all caught to, you know, you do what we want or we'll arrest you. She's 17, she's on the streets because she's trying to support family. But she gets picked up by the cops and then she's given this choice. Come and do what we want or we'll arrest you and you know, ruin your life. Or you know, if, as if they're not ruining her life anyway. And it's based on true events. And I thought she was a fantastic heroine because the language allowed you to see her vulnerability as well. So that was um, a stunning start to the month, The Night Crawling by Layla Motley. Then we moved on to Case Study by Graham McKay Burnett. And this book plays around with form and you could almost pick, think it was a non-fiction book. It's um, part biography of this psychotherapist and part notebooks from one of his patients or clients. And it's set in the 19... and the story is set in the 1960s and his patient has got all these notebooks detailing all her visits to this psychotherapist because she believes that his interactions with her sister led to her sister's suicide. And it's all about fake and truth, false identities, the identities we put on, the masks we wear. Um, that was a fascinating book to read and you you do think wondering is this true is this fiction it's it's so well written that you you do question yourself sometimes the third book i read was the colony by audrey mcgee and again another off the book a long list and another five star and i thought this was super it's set in a remote um irish island and we have the arrival of an English painter Lloyd and a French linguist Masson or JP as he goes and they go there to capture the essence of the island. Uh, JP is re researching the, the language because this island is one of the few islands that still speak the um, original Irish. They, they still got the Irish dialect and he's mapping the language to see how it changes and the artist wants to paint the island. He wants to capture the island in art form and so you've got a conflict between the two men because JP believes that the presence of this English artist is going to ruin all the work he's done on language. And then you've got the um, the islanders themselves and the effect that these two men have on the islanders. I adore this one. I thought it was brilliant. And side by side, you've got 
the Troubles, because it's set in the 1970s, you've got the Troubles in Ireland side by side with a punctuating the story as well. Fascinating. I, I love that one. The fourth book, we move away from the book, and it's Annette Galliard. And this is a, a sort of like a gothic horror thriller. And it's The Ghost Woods by C.J. Cook. And it's the theme of motherhood. It's set, we've got two voices, 1959 Mabel and 1965 Pearl, both unmarried mothers, both sent to this mother and baby house, Lycan Hall, which is a remote, remote place, miles from anywhere. And first impressions are very good, but you've got this underlying theme, you've got the story of the witch in the woods, you've got lights in the woods, you've got creeping fungus, you've got figures, you've got an atmosphere that builds and builds and builds. You do have to suspend belief a little bit, but um, an excellent book. You've got girls in alien environments and it makes you think about the Magdalene laundries, as does um, the next book I read, which was off the booker, and it's Small Things Like These by Claire Keegan. And this is set in the 1980s. And we have Bill, who's a coal, coal merchant, who has a wife and five daughters, whose own mother was an unmarried mother, and if not for... Um, a sort of a wealthy land landowner taking her mother his mother in and providing her a home and him a home bill's mother could have ended up in the convent the mother and baby where the unmarried mothers went he's a kind man he's a generous man the story is set at christmas so we have lots of wintry descriptions and at the convent he sees something that he shouldn't have done and then he's got this moral dilemma, should he act and ease his, and should he act and do something good and risk bringing down his family because the power of the convent, the convent gives him so much work and does he risk all of that or does he stay silent? So it's a moral dilemma and again that was another five star for me. Um, I, I I loved it. It's a very short book, but there was so much in it. Then we moved to another book, which was a disappointment for me, really, mainly because I don't do historical fiction. It's just something that I walk past in a bookshop. And this was Booth by Karen Joy Fowler. And it's the story of the Booth family, uh, John Wilkes Booth, um, assassinated Abraham Lincoln and it's the story of his family going right back to his father and the rest of his siblings. His father was a Shakespearean actor um, and his elder brother becomes one of the Shakespearean actors of the time and you have their, old, their stories and you've got Rosalie who is the unmarried sister who stays at home looking after mother and you've got Asia, who's another sister, and Joe, And you're following these families, but for me, th th there wasn't enough in it. it the characters were almost two-dimensional. I wasn't invested in any of them. But then again, I don't like historical fiction anyway. So th that was um, a disappointment for me. I mean, people who love historical fiction will absolutely do it but I didn't then another off the book list this is the final of the book list for this month so far and that was Treacle Walker by Alan Garner and this is a book that I struggled to describe but I had, I thought it was absolutely fans, fans, fascinating the way it was written it's a mix of folklore and myth and reality and dreams and it's one of these books where you need your computer next to you because there's so much in to Google because Treacle Walker is a rag and bone man and Treacle is a Middle English term for 
an antidote to poisons. And Treacle says that he can heal anything except jealousy. So you've got sort of a layer there. He arrives at Joe's house. Joe is a, a boy who seems to live alone. We, there's no sign of any parents. And Joe sees reality and dreams. He's, he can see both elements with one eye he sees reality with another eye he sees dreams and it is such a good read and you've got sort of folklore elements as well you've got a bog man who rises up from the bog and oh yeah it's it's just so much in that one it's one that you you need to unpick and the final one for the month was mad honey um and by Jodie P. Colt and Jennifer Finney Bolan, which is a net galley arc that comes out the end of October, beginning of November, somewhere around there. And this is the story of Olivia, whose son Asher is accused of his girlfriend's murder. So you've got Olivia's story, you've got Asher's story, you've got Lily's story, which is fascinatingly written because we've got two voices, Olivia and Lily. And Lily's voice she tells her story backwards so we're going backwards further and further in time so we can see what makes Lily tick and you've got this courtroom drama and I love courtroom dramas and the cross examinations and all that sort of stuff um Judy Picold normally is a very good read for me but this one there was a twist that I didn't mind the twist, I just didn't like the preaching that went with the twist, if you see what I mean. But you'd need to read the book too, to understand that. So those were the eight books that I read for the second, first half of August. Um, there were five stars in there. I mean, three of the books were five stars. So it's which one is my book of the first half of the month. And... I am going to go for the Claire Keegan, things like these. A short book, but a powerful book. And I love the character of Bill and this dilemma that he's battling with. So I will see what I get up to in the second half of August. Hopefully my library will have delivered a few more bookups. Booker, prize, long list books. So happy reading. Take care.